All right, well, welcome everyone. Um, in this webinar, we're actually gonna go through some of the difficulties of starting a marketplace and everything from setting it up to taking it, taking it to market and some of the common misconceptions around building a marketplace and what makes it difficult to start with. So really excited because we have some great marketplace experts here. Uh, Masha Kusid, we'll start with you, your partner at Drive Capital. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. I'm Masha Kusid, I'm a partner at Drive. Um, we led Nautical's recent fundraise and also Plans uh, fundraise uh, about six months ago now. So we're a generalist fund based in Columbus, Ohio, and, and we have invested in a number of marketplaces. I've been thinking about this space for a while, so excited to chat more about what we get excited about here today. Amazing. Great to have you here. Uh, Mark uh, Bonin with uh, Plaid. You know, you're the co-founder. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks for having me as well. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm from Plaid. Uh, we're Incorporated in marketplace, so the ambition is to help everyone plan event more efficiently. All right, now really focus on enterprise. We work with some big enterprise all over North America. Amazing, great to have you here. And Ryan Lee, you're with uh, Nautical, uh, CEO there. Why don't you introduce yourself? Yeah, um, you know we uh, we started marketplace uh, tech because you know we saw a real gap in the market. You know it looked like everybody was trying to build a custom solution, and uh, you know we wanted to make sure that at the end of the day there was an option to have a turnkey uh, marketplace platform. Amazing. Well, my name is Bavin. I'm the uh, CEO and CTO here at Nautical as well. Um, Masha, why don't we actually start with you and dig right into this? So, you know, Drive has recently invested, as you mentioned, both in uh, uh, Planned and Nautical. You know, what what makes you and Drive interested and excited about the marketplace space? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think you can think of marketplaces really as another type of business model, right? Like you hear investors talking about SaaS software as a service. That's just like a way for a business to generate revenue. Marketplace is something equivalent to SaaS, but in a different way to generate revenue. And what gets us really excited about marketplaces generally is like this idea that you could acquire one customer but sell multiple products to that customer. So you only pay to acquire that customer once, but then you can squeeze all this additional margin out of that acquired customer. So when you think of companies like Uber and what they've been able to do with uh, acquiring you, know, you when you want to ride downtown, but now they can also sell you snacks when you get there. Like that's the real beauty and the magic of a marketplace, which gets us investors excited because you know our uh, mandate at the end of the day is to return capital on our investments, and marketplaces have that ability to scale so much faster than you know your one-off direct-to-consumer business or your one-off you know burger shop on the corner. Um, so we continue to be excited by marketplaces. We made a number of investments in the direct-to-consumer space and the B2B space. Um, it's a business model that we continue to look for and we continue to leverage in, amongst our portfolio as a, as a way to kind of execute on our mandate to return capital. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of opportunity. Obviously, we see it. Um, Mark, you're kind of in this space. Why don't you give some background on why you started Planned? Um, basically, I always try to start a business since I was young. I started my first one. You can call it more project than business, but when I was my first year of college, um, that was a salary agency that was selling beers to bar, basically. Uh, sell it after a year, we invest in another startup that just fell miserably. After two years, we tried to build a watch on charge fund, basically. So, a bad idea. Uh, but I met my co-founder in that business. Um, really liked to work with him. So, in summer, that was 2017. We just opened an Excel sheet, put 20 ideas business. We think we could execute that and generate revenue in three months because we had just three months of course all runway. I uh, came up with the idea of building a marketplace because both of us were not technical, so that was kind of easier to build. Um, build a marketplace for office space in a few months, few weeks actually. Get that up and running, and people did it for all the time, just following the the feedback of the market uh, to what we do today. That's amazing. So you're literally talking about launching a marketplace in 90 days and three months of running yeah, ahead. That's much. awesome. Um, and Ryan, you know, you built Nautical obviously to solve a problem that you saw in the marketplace space. Um, you know, what can you share about why it's so difficult to launch a marketplace? You know, it was interesting. Uh, I think you know, Nautical came about because we spoke to a couple dozen different organizations that were trying to build marketplaces and everybody was looking at it through the prism of commerce. And really what we found, um, and, and I think the reason why it's so difficult is because you just don't know the unknown unknowns. 
you know, and, and uh, the unknown unknowns in a marketplace are the fintech and logistics parts. You know, they just didn't realize how complicated the back office becomes. Um, you know, when you're when you're trying to operate a marketplace, and so for us, we realized uh, that you know if we were able to build those back office components, uh, you know, and and package them, productize them, you know, the headcount burden uh, for these organizations and these business models uh, goes way down. And, uh, and so, you know, we can compress the timeline of building a marketplace from two to three years down to 90 days. And so that's, that's ultimately what we figured out. Um, and we've been able to do it uh, a couple dozen times now. Amazing. Well, Mark, I mean, you hear kind of Ryan talk about kind of compressing that timeline and all the back office difficulties. Like, does that resonate with you when you started Planned? You yeah. know, how did it start? You know, what were you spending your time on? Uh, all of us were non technical, so our child hired. We hired people through Upwork, run a WordPress, and the tech was super scrappy. But that was just to prove that small note. Like when you build a marketplace, how can you prove a network? Uh, I just showed a glimpse of greatness. I guess something that could work, but I had a really tiny network, but that worked really well. So our time was just to build that network versus, versus the tech around it. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, you have to work with what you have, right? Yeah. Um, and time to market is critical there. Uh, I mean, that kind of gets us, I guess, into, into one of the misconceptions, which is around, you know, do you need to invest in tech or defensible tech, right? Um, you know, Ryan, you, you, as you mentioned, you've spoken to a ton of businesses around this. Like, what are your thoughts around businesses and marketplaces that think about, you know, my core asset is the technology that I build? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, you don't hear organizations nowadays saying, I need to build a CRM from the ground up to be competitive. Right, you take Salesforce.com or you know uh, Siebel or Oracle, you know, to, to or even HubSpot. Right, you also don't hear them say, "I'm going to build my own ERP to be competitive." You take some off the shelf. Uh, you know, I think in the absence of a real marketplace platform being out there, a lot of organizations felt like the marketplace platform itself was the defensible IP. And I would argue that yes, it was until it became a commodity. And you know everybody builds the exact same thing when they're doing marketplace tech. And so for me, you know the defensible part of a marketplace business is the customer experience, the buyer's experience, and the logistics or the delivery experience, regardless whether it's digital or physical. Those are really the the things that you really ought to um, focus on when you're a marketplace business in terms of the defensible IP. The actual transaction that's commodity. You know, and so uh, I would argue that that is the 20% that everybody ought to focus on, um, not you know, the, the transactional component, which is more or less an accounting system, if you will. Right. I mean, it's a lot of the back office like you're talking about, right? Uh, I guess, Masha, like, you, know, you have um, you know, entrepreneurs kind of coming to you and saying, I want to build a marketplace. They're talking about where to allocate their funds once they raise them. How do you think about where they should be allocating it and what allows them differentiation? Yeah, like I couldn't agree with what Ryan was saying more. I think every founder or leadership team is gonna have this kind of buy versus build decision all along. There's gonna be all these, you know, forks in the road where they have to make that choice. And we're in this era of like headless commerce or best of class um, software products. So I think even when we were speaking to Nautical, like you brought it up, Bob, and if, if someone has built an entire business around this piece of your technology stack, like go with them and then you can focus on what makes your marketplace or your business super unique. And for a marketplace, frankly, that's the network. Like you want to be able to leverage that network over and over and over and have it return quicker and faster than any you know customer that came before it. So like why would you spend your time thinking about how payments are being facilitated or how your inventory is moving from point A to point B? We can focus on how I can get Bob to spend more money on my marketplace. Like it just it's it's an absolute massive mistake for any founder to think that they can go and build infrastructure better than like the people that are focusing on it every day of the week like go let your tech team focus on those super unique products those insights that you have specific to your customer base that's going to build a moat around your customer base and your network yeah i mean you're definitely talking about kind of the buyer experience the seller experience how do you optimize that um and mark i mean this is obviously a question that that you have to to deal with which is where do you invest? You know, what are you focused on building? How are you thinking about, you know, the customer experience, the buyer experience? I would say same thing that National Brand said. Like every time you can take a piece and plug it, if it increases speed, we go for it. Because um, when we when you build 
take your services for sure, and then you need to uh, keep that piece of software, keep investing to keep it up to date to drive resources. And the trade off of building these pieces while it's not part of your business or defensive or an advantage at the end of the day, I don't think you should invest on that. So we don't. Yeah, maybe from like an outsider's perspective, when I look at Mark's business and his product team and their focus, they're all constantly focused on what drives more use for their end user. Yeah. Like that's all their product team cares about. And in that way, they're going to sprint ahead of anybody else in their, in their space. That's great. Um, so then I guess it kind of brings up the, the other question, which is, uh, you know, as you're looking at all these marketplaces, I mean, you know, there is a level of uniqueness to all of them. What, maybe starting with you, Masha, like what do you think are the commonalities that are, hey, this is just germane to every marketplace, um, you know, that if you're trying to start a marketplace, you should be thinking about like, hey, this actually isn't unique to me. You know, this is a problem that might be solved by looking at technology partners um, out there. And then where do you kind of focus that 80-20 of, of where you invest versus where you don't in, when you're starting? Yeah, I think there's actually even a pretty set of standardized metrics to take a look at if you're a founder of a marketplace. Like, like what is telling me that my marketplace is working, right? It's probably not something in the tech stock unless something's like really, really broken, right? It looks more like, um, like I mentioned, retention of your cohort. It's like, is each new market or each new product that you're opening up growing at a faster clip than the one before it? Because that's showing you that you have some network effects, right? Do your unit economics make sense? Are you able to sell things for more than you pay for them? Like that's what you should be looking at and thinking about as a founder of a business, not like, again, what is happening beneath the surface of your technology stack. Like that just needs to work, right? So you can go and focus on those metrics that investors like myself or others are gonna care about. And like investors are a little bit like lemmings, you know, they have a set of metrics that they're looking for. And if you can hit those metrics, like you'll be able to go out there and get funding, but nobody in diligence is gonna be like peeking under your tech stack and saying like, Hey, you you know what I'm really excited about here is this like one payment line of code. Right. No, like no one cares. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> it totally answers it. Yeah, I mean, I guess like the other side of that is, um, you know, uh, and maybe Ryan, you can talk about this, like, because it leads to kind of where where you build the roadmap for for Nautical, which is a platform for marketplaces, right? Um, how do you think about like how many types of marketplaces are? that a platform should be able to surface or a service, right? Um, if you had to segment out the different types of marketplaces, how would you do that? And then how do you build a roadmap that caters to each of them? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I'll, I'll first start with unpacking what a marketplace founder does when they decide to build from the ground up, right? They decide at that point to build four different businesses. They decide to build their core business, which is the marketplace, right? Then they're going to build a commerce tool. Then they're going to build a fintech tool and they're going to build a logistics tool. And then they have to make sure all that works, right? In, in harmony. And so, you know, in my mind, there are five different types of marketplaces. There's product, there are transactional marketplaces, there are digital marketplaces, there's booking, uh, there's services, and then there's listing marketplaces. You know, if you, if you look the cross uh, cut of all of these, there's a commonality that the transaction's fundamentally the same. You know, if you're, if you're Uber, you know, you onboard drivers. If you're Airbnb, you onboard hosts, you put them under contract. You know, if you're Apple, you onboard developers. Again, they go under contract, they get to list their product. You know, they get to list it in multiple languages and currencies and everything else. Someone, a buyer, procures that product. And then your accounting team makes sure that, you know, at the end of the day, or at least your system, ensures that, you know, it's broken out, the revenue, the payout, and all that other good stuff. That's all commoditized. Really, at the end of the day, what differentiates, you know, let's say Apple's App Store from maybe Roku's App Store is the delivery of that buyer's experience, right? And, and ultimately how they receive those, uh, um, you know, those, those goods, right? What differentiates? Amazon from uh, Rocketon, right? It's it's the customer service, it's the selection, it's the quality, it's the speed of delivery. Again, logistics. Um, and so, if you look at where these companies kind of optimize, you know, they're not optimizing in their tech stack. They're optimizing in the experience delivered to the end buyer. And, and I think that's, you know, when you're a founder and you're adhering to, you know, to an extent, you know, the 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 startup contract of being lean and efficient. You know, if you decide you're going to undertake by building the entire thing yourself, you, you, you've kind of thrown that 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 rubric out uh, when you go down that path. So, you know, 
it's all about validating your business model. And to your point, you know, you want to just drive what you can with respect to your customer so that you can get to that next phase of growth um, and, and really nail the metrics that, that matter. You know, and, and writing lines of code and, and building tech debt is not <laughs> Not something anybody really cares about. Yeah, you're not getting any extra credit for that. No. <laughs> Mark, I'd love to actually, I mean, as someone that's running marketplaces, like Ryan just described different types of marketplaces, listing marketplaces, product marketplaces, service marketplaces. Um, you know, when you started Planned, did you think that it was, hey, I want to target a listing marketplace or a product one? Like, was there any thought that you, you had around that or? You know, was it more organic just based on, on customer demand? Um, so just to go back in the story, we started as that marketplace for office spaces. And that was really to build liquidity on both sides of the equation, like that we're demand supplier, we're trying to find uh, which side would be harder to build liquidity on both. And just had so much hard time to build liquidity on both. We're even not thinking about payment, about communication, we're just trying to drive them in at that point of time. Um, and it didn't work, so we added all the category of spaces we could think of. We had event space at that point of time. We started to run a bit of, of ads and do a bit of outreach to see what would stick. And then event space worked like we just started nodes working. Um, we relaunched in 2018 and at that point we were a managed marketplace. So even though it was really more about building that node than thinking about payments, I would set up QuickBooks uh, for the communication we would use SendGrid. Uh, we didn't build any technology, but we have yeah. transaction going on in the tool. Well, congratulations. I mean, that's an amazing way to get it built, right? I'd love to go a little, just a little bit in into that, which is, you know, you talk about um, how how it kind of transitioned into the event space. Like, um, where do you go from there, right? So you have events, you know, Masha, you started this out by saying, how do you sell more into these customers that um, that you have, which is the beauty of marketplaces, right? So wh what are you thinking about in terms of uh, expansion within kind of that event space? Um, so we had that small note, we started to have bookings, and then we started to look at our core to understand um, which core was the best. Our business was always by cutting, so we start with everything, then event space. We were doing B2C, B2B, we look at our core, if B2B was better. Um, and when we figure out B2B was our segment, all our just to go back to the point, everything we built was to improve the experience of that customer and get more repeat. So the metric for us is NR, like net retention revenue, how much they can scale that logo, and that has been our focus. And even when we think about the demand side and supply side, uh, the hard side of our marketplace is demand, which is different for a lot of marketplace. So we've built uh, value for the demand side, even for the supply, if we can find any plugin, we'll just take that we build for the demand side right now. But like when I looked at his business, once they sell an event space, they're going to sell a caterer and they're going to sell an AV person and yeah. they're, going to, they're going to layer on all these services into that original set sell. So that, you know, gets investors excited. And so that's actually a great point because you think about like kind of that expansion and, and how, how, you know, Mark and his team can kind of do that. Asha, is there any, from your perspective, like is there other tech that you really think is important to think about to help with that expansion or to facilitate discovery um, you know that you think is important for anyone to build a market that's building a marketplace to be thinking about yeah i remember just like a specific moment with plan during diligence that got me really excited was i was speaking to one of um one of your customers and they said to me like i don't even go to google anymore i just go straight to plan so like imagine if plan is to your point like the discovery engine and that continues to facilitate discovery even when you're not planning events. So like, how do you stay top of mind to customers when it's not necessarily that moment of intent of like, hey, I have a birthday party planner, but a happy hour for my team needs to plan. Like how does plan become the central influential hub of any corporate event planning um, uh, event, for lack of a better word, uh, in, in any buyer's mind, right? So like, whether there's a content strategy to be done there, whether there's like some discovery engine to be built, like there are again additional products, but they're not they're not kind of the core picks and shovels infrastructure product. It's like how do you continue to capture mind share with interesting products and extensions? That makes sense. And I and I guess to your point, like that's not necessarily saying that even those products need to be built in house. There may be off the shelf yeah. ones that you can still use to do that, right? right. Right, or maybe like your customers are building products for you that you can then go and integrate into your marketplace, right? So like, I think there's ways to get creative about it. And when you 
leave the infrastructure to the companies like Nautical, it allows you to kind of open up your own product roadmap to think about like those huge pie in the sky ideas. Awesome. Um, Ryan, you, like so kind of hearing Mosh talk about like how much other tech can potentially help, do you ever feel that there's an instance where some businesses that as they're thinking about, you know, starting marketplaces, over invest in tech where they're like, hey, this is, the, you know, they're thinking about implementing too much, um, you know, and any guidance on that in terms of where to start, what tech is critical to start with? That's a great question. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, my philosophy with tech is, you know, uh, it all starts and ends with people. You know, we built tech for people, <laughs> you know, people use the tech. And at the end of the day, it's, it's designed to, you know, make our lives easier. And so it empowers people. And so, you know, you, I can absolutely create way too much tech um, that burdens the process, you know, whether it is, you know, on the back end, the processes and, and, and having to add headcount, you know, to, uh, to, to kind of wade through too much tech. Um, and, then, and then secondarily is, you know, you have to unwind that and you have to maintain it you know, when there's security updates or there's a breach or there's, you know, and so when you have too many different, you know, uh, uh, tech stacks or at least uh, uh, platforms powering your marketplace, you know, you, you, have, you have a real liability there um, that, that goes beyond just what I call tech debt, which is, you know, the maintenance of it. Now you have liability in the exposure. Um, and, uh, and so it's, it's, it's kind of a buyer beware situation. I mean, you know, again, you really ought to optimize for what is going to, you know, obviously drive more buyers um, and improving that experience. That's that at the end of the day is the most important thing that you want to do. <clears throat> totally makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I look. I think everyone is probably going to agree that it is about that that experience that you gotta you gotta focus on. Um, you know, I think we're good to to wrap up here. I think um, would love to hear any final thoughts. Maybe Mark, starting with you, just. If there's one thing that you would advise anyone, um, you know, that's starting, like, you know, not necessarily about the tech, but just just in general, right? Like, how do you think about being a founder? Like, what what, what should you think about, you know, about founding a marketplace? Um, I think optimizing for speed is always, or most of the time, a good decision, especially in your early days, um, because the most precious resource is time. At the end of the day, even if when you start something, you're bootstrapped, you don't want to realizing two years after you build a product that it didn't work um, and taking like third party options you go faster. So that's, I think that's the way to go. So optimizing for speed would be. Makes a lot of sense. Asha, what about you? I mean, you've seen a ton, just, you know, what's the first thing you should be thinking about? Yeah, I think in some ways it's like almost the easiest time to build a business and the hardest time to build a business. So I would encourage anyone thinking about marketplaces or how to expand their current line of products to like really take advantage of what's out there and focus on what you're really, really good at. Like specialization in this case matters and it, it will come across to your investors, to your customers, to all your um, all your people that you kind of owe and, and you want to enable. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're going to build your business and um, you know take advantage of the, not shortcuts, but the, the tool sets that are available to you to make your life easier as a founder. Yeah, I think that's great, great advice. Um, Ryan, what about you from your end? Yeah, I mean, what I'm most excited about about platforms like Nautical is, you know, we're we're taking away the undifferentiated heavy lift, right? You know, the infrastructure that you should not be focusing on, and and that's exciting to me because then businesses like Planned can go out and say, hey, what other value added services can I add? to an event, right? You know, maybe you could help provide logistics. Maybe it's, you know, the catering. There's, there's, this, there's so many other options that you, can, that you can focus on and put resources into and experiment with when you're not having to maintain this massive uh, infrastructure liability, you know? And so that's what I'm most excited about is uh, to see the plethora of, you know, businesses that will spin off of, you know, these uh, infrastructure type organizations uh, that, that you know, are offering software as a service. So I'm excited to see what the future holds. Couldn't agree more. Uh, super excited. Ryan, Mark, Masha, thank you so much for the time. Uh, really great to speak with all of you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.